Good morning, Booktube. It's Thea, and happy Saturday. It is Saturday, March 2nd, so it is officially the first Saturday in March, and today and tomorrow are my town's local like, big book festival, and I'm really excited. I didn't get to go last year, um, but I'm really excited to go this year. There's going to be some great authors there. Um, Kristen White is going to be there, Megan Shepard, um, Robin Lefevers, um, uh, Mary Kabika is going to be there, um, uh, Lisa Genova is going to be there, um, and then a lot of like local authors. Uh, Quam Alexander is going to be there, who I just finished reading Booked, um, his like middle grade book about soccer. Very cute, very adorable. Um, and I am really excited to just have a day of my loves and be around books go to some panels go to some signings um but i figured i would take you guys along with me and we'll kind of show you about the the festival and kind of let you guys sit on and on some panels so i'll probably have some little clips throughout the day you probably won't see much of me um but you'll see a lot of clips from the festival um but i figured i would just check in with you guys let you guys kind of give you guys an introduction to this video um but i am gonna go get dressed and get ready to go but i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i will see you guys later <laughs>
Hello. So thank you for coming. Welcome. Sorry, that's the problem. Your feedback. Okay, so hi, I'm Nancy Weber Graff. I'm one of the moderators. This is Sydney Bolton. She's the other moderator. And behind us, we have the lovely Cass Morgan and Kirsten White. So give us a round of applause. <laughs> this panel's topic is fantasy thrillers. Who will survive? Cass Morgan is the author of the 100 series, which includes the 100, Day 21, Homecoming, and Rebellion. The 100 is now also a television show on the CW, and Cass currently works as an editor and lives in Brooklyn, New York. According to Goodreads, she lives in constant fear of her IKEA bookca bookcase collapsing and burying her under a mound of science fiction and Victorian novels. It Girl, happened say. already, actually. I've got to no. update that. Oh I survived. I'm glad you survived. Okay, and Kirsten White is the New York Times best-selling author of many books for teens and young readers, including And I Darken, now I Rise, Bright We Burn, The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein, and Slayer. She lives with her family near the ocean in San Diego, lucky woman, where she perpetually lurks in the shadows. Okay. <laughs> so maybe Arizona is not so good for you either. On her blog, we learn that Kirsten is the giver of the world's most awkward hugs, and she believes sleeping is better than books. She says, someday we will figure out how to combine the two, then we can all retire because we will have finally solved the problem of too many books, too little time. <laughs> so, the theme of survival, how do you see your book connecting to the theme of survival, and what is the appeal of a thriller for teens? Sorry, yeah, I have a turn. Okay. <laughs> I have a turn. Okay. Um, so the theme of survival, that's a really interesting one, because I feel like as teenagers, you know, survival in like a very literal sense is maybe not part of your life, but you know, I, I still have nightmares that I have to go back to high school. Um, it's like my one recurring stress dream, so if you are in high school, I'm so sorry, you're literally living out my personal nightmare. Um, but I think, but I think we love these stories and we're attracted to these stories of young people going through extreme things and extreme circumstances because it's an exploration of strength and how we find strength and individual strength because you know my type of strong is not your type of strong um, and it might not be the type of strong that a particular situation calls for. So with Slayer, it's actually a spin-off series from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So when I got the opportunity to write Slayer, I got to create my own Slayer. And the concept of vampire slayers is that there's one girl in all the world who is given sort of this um, mystical chosen one status and she has heightened strength and heightened instincts and heightened abilities so that she can fight vampires and demons. Um, I don't know about you, I did not fight a lot of vampires and demons in high school, although if they had been there I would have dated them. Um, and I have some theories about the mean girls at my high school. <laughs> I'll go later. We'll talk after. Um, I am writing the sequel so I would like to know. Um, and so but it's a, it's a big responsibility, right? Like, if you're 16, you're trying to get your driver's license, you're trying to study for your history test, and also you have to patrol every night to make sure that vampires aren't terrorizing your neighborhood. Um, which, you know, I can relate to. I have a lot of vampires in my neighborhood growing up. And so, um, so when I was deciding who I wanted my Slayer to be, I spent a lot of time in the past few books exploring strength and exploring survival. So in The Dark Stone of Lilith Frankenstein, um, I retold Frankenstein from the perspective of Elizabeth Levanza, who's Victor Frankenstein's doomed bride. Mm -hmm. And then I wrote the Anti-Darkern trilogy, which is about a gender swap for the Impaler, because when you learn about incredibly brutal 15th century Romanian princes, of course, naturally you think that's a YA novel. <laughs> um, and so I had been exploring um, strength in a lot of different ways, but in, in Slayer I really wanted to explore someone whose strength is in her kindness and in her ability to love and care about other people and how that would both conflict and also um, be a bonus to being called to be a vampire slayer and how that would impact her and her sense of self. And um, so yeah, so for me survival stories, they're always so intimate because you can have the biggest sort of most extreme circumstances, but the way that you survive them and the way that you move through them is by recognizing and learning your own strengths and claiming them. Either Nina or her twin sister Armas, she's not picky. So, um, there's, you know, there's a whole prophecy thing, doom and destruction, the usual. All right, so this is from the point of view of the hunter. It took her too long to find them again. 
their mother knew what she was doing. She disappeared. And not only did she disappear from conventional means of tracking, she used magical wards and shields to prevent mystical tracking as well. But the hunter was patient and had plenty of resources. Eventually, the mother would make a mistake, and then the hunter could finish the job. A little more than a year after the vampire's failure, her opportunity came. Watchers were creatures of habit, and even in the hiding, the mother responded when a council member asked to meet. The hunter knew the time and date of the meeting. She was ready. She stood outside a nondescript house in a Phoenix subdivision. Everything here was beige. <laughs> the landscape, the houses, the auras. It was the least magical place she had ever encountered. It might have been the opposite of a hell mouth, a, a demonic dead spot. Even hell was preferable to Arizona. <laughs> I'm so sorry, I love you all so much, but that is my favorite joke I've ever heard. I understand if you don't come see me. <laughs>